Officer of Media Relations. And today I'm going to be introducing uh, a number of prestigious speakers to talk about the reward for the murder of Brianna Nicole Kupfer. Uh, today you're going to hear from uh, Honorable Council Member Paul Koretz, as well as Chief Michael Moore. We also have in attendance Chief Beatrice Grimala, Chief Blake Chow. You'll also hear from Lieutenant John Radke of West Bureau Homicide, as well as Captain Sonia Monaco, the commanding officer of Wilshire Division. So at this point, I'm going to introduce the Honorable Council Member Paul Koretz. The tragic murder of Brianna Kupfer in Hancock Park has shaken and shocked our community to its core. I want to first address Brianna's family. My own daughter is not that much older than Brianna, and I can only imagine the heartbreak and anguish that her family is feeling and the pain. I want you to know that you have my heartfelt support and my full commitment that I will help with whatever LAPD may need until every option to find this vile killer is exhausted. We will find this vicious criminal, we will arrest him, and we will get him prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. But we must fight justice for her, fight for justice for her, even though nothing will bring her back. Our mission and my objective is that the perpetrator who took away Brianna from her beloved parents, colleagues, friends, and our community will be permanently locked away, constantly reminded of his horrible, ugly, and senseless murder of an innocent young woman who had endless potential. On the day this tragedy happened, I was immediately briefed in real time. LAPD has and will continue to have my full and unconditional support to bring the perpetrator to justice. As such, this morning I introduced a motion in City Council calling for a $50,000 reward for anyone with information that leads to the arrest and prosecution of the suspect. We must never allow this type of lawlessness to become commonplace. This horrible murder is an attack on our way of life, our civil society, and our neighborhood. And I want to thank Chief Moore, Assistant Chief Gramala, Deputy Chief Blake Chow, Lieutenant John Radke, Detective Herman Fretlor, Captain Sonia Monaco, and Anthony Otero, and the entire team from Operations West Bureau and Wilshire Division. And now I'd like to read a statement from the family. It is with great sadness that our, our entire Cooper family mourns the passing of our beautiful daughter, Brianna, as a result of this horrific attack. Brianna, who was born, educated, and was building her career here in Los Angeles, was a rising star in this community, whose ascent was unnecessarily cut short by the actions of a heartless criminal last Thursday. In many ways, she embodied everything that is great about Los Angeles, and the entire city should grieve over this senseless act. Brianna was a smart, funny, driven, and kind soul who only wanted to better herself and her community on a daily basis. While she could be shy at times, she lit up any room she was in and strove to elevate everyone she met so they could be better versions of themselves. She deeply loved her family and friends and made every day better simply by her presence. We will miss her greatly and there won't be a day that goes by that we will not think of her. We would like to thank the City Council, LAPD, and the entire West Side community for the outpouring of love and support that we have received since this tragedy and hope that collectively we can find the person who murdered Brianna. This is not only about bringing that person who committed this crime to justice, but at its core, making the community safer and ensuring that it never happens again. We would like to especially acknowledge and thank our friends in the West Side community who have selflessly donated over $200,000 towards the apprehension and conviction of the man who murdered our daughter. This is exactly the type of community support that Brianna sought to provide in everything she did. 
In addition, we'd like to thank the anonymous donors who have added $25,000 and $10,000 respectively to this amount. Please take the time to hug and cherish your family today as Brianna would have wanted and in her everlasting memory, work at the grassroots level to make our communities better every day. And with all the public and privately donated rewards added together, including the $50,000 motion I put forward in council this morning, we are topping over $250,000 for the capture and conviction of the suspects. This is important to bring more attention to this crime um, and to get more public response. We know that the suspect uh, entered other businesses as well. Uh, if you saw him, let us know. I want to thank again uh, Chief Moore for his immediate response as always. Not only is he a man of his word, he is a principled family man who, shared my, who shares my deepest sympathies for the family. I'm grateful to have him at the helm of this investigation and now I'd like to hear from Chief Moore. Council Member, thank you for the introduction. This has been a tough week in Los Angeles. When we look across the last seven days, beginning with the loss of our officer, <coughs> Fernando Arroyo, followed by Brianna's murder, senseless murder. Unfortunately, it's also <coughs> during a time in which we saw a murder of a 70-year-old woman as she sat, uh, stood at a bus bench getting ready to go to USC and be part of that, that first responder group, those individuals that are putting their lives on line each day to safeguard all of us. <coughs> and again, we also have a 16-year-old whose body was cruelly dumped on the side of the road of the 110 freeway last week, and I'll be attending her vigil tonight, Tiana Theus. We're here today because of Brianna. We're here today to pull out to a call out to this community that cries for your help. This individual responsible for this vicious, senseless, and brutal crime, it walks amongst us. I am convinced of that. I'm convinced of it because of the reports of his activities prior to and in the aftermath of this brutal homicide, where he visited businesses up and down La Brea and along the Beverly Corridor as well. Businesses large and small. And as he walked about the area, countless thousands of people drove by, walked by. On Thursday, our officers from, South, uh, from West Bureau Homicide responded and began their intensive investigation. An investigation that has not stopped over the weekend, continues uh, every day and will continue until this man is identified and brought to the criminal justice system. And in that course of that investigation, they identified closed circuit television uh, footage that identifies some of the clues and tips that I've talked about here. They've also have imagery that we put a community bulletin together that I draw the public's attention to if they've not seen it. It's available at LEPD online. It showcases an individual with a distinctive backpack, a male, African American, six foot to six foot five, thin build with short dreadlocks wearing a painter style uh, face covering. It's been described as an N95, but it's actually closer to just a cone that you would find as a dust filter at, a, say, a Home Depot or Lowe's. These are very distinctive attributes and a very distinctive ident identif identification. And I'm convinced that in a community that, has be that began its outpouring to me and uh, the members of my senior staff and the Wilshire uh, the Wilshire Station about their care and their concern for this, this senseless tragedy, I'm looking to that community today to help us solve this crime. I am grateful for Councilman Kretz's motion for $50,000 as a reward, as an incentive. I am grateful for the outpouring of the love and support of this community. And I also extend to the Kumfer family, as a father, as a police professional, as just a human being, the unimaginable pain that they must be going through losing a 24-year-old daughter who has a bright and, 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 and optimistic future and every promise of, of, those, of those brighter days, of those 
moments of success and pride that every father, every, every parent wants to have in their son or daughter. And to have that viciously taken away by this brutal, by this brutal homicide. I can't imagine the pain. But let that family and let every family and every member of the community that is feeling this, this pain know that LAPD stands with you. Our work, not only here in the Hancock community and the Melrose community, when we saw this last year an increase in violence, when we saw an increase in smash and grabs and in, in robberies, we brought added patrol resources. We marshaled resources that were brought at the hands of council members who brought, at, who brought us the ability to deploy more police officers, a greater visibility. And we saw success and we saw a reduction in crime. But yet we couldn't save this one. Well, that, that, with that consequence, that that we feel that pain, and let me commit to you that investigatively, we're pulling out every stop, and I'm confident in the men and women of West Bureau Homicide, of the Wilshire Command, of this department, to not just stand with this family, but to serve this family by identifying this killer and bringing him before the criminal justice system. That is our sworn duty to protect and serve, and that we will do. At this point, I'd like to introduce Lieutenant Radke, this individual oversees the West Bureau homicide detail, a group of some of the finest detectives in, our, in our, our cadre, if you will, people who are dedicated to bring justice to families who have been victimized in such senseless crimes as we see here. Lieutenant Radke. Thank you, Chief. What we can say is that uh, five days ago at 1.36 p.m. in the afternoon, Brianna was uh, working in this store all by herself. She sent a text to a friend letting her know that there was someone inside the location that was giving her a bad vibe. Uh, regrettably, that person did not see the text immediately. And uh, at uh, 1.50 p.m., a citizen who was coming into the store, a customer, uh, found Brianna lying on the, on the ground, lifeless, covered in blood. That person called 911. Our officers and paramedics arrived out here quickly, but regrettably, they determined that she was dead. Um, suspect took off on foot and he was last seen uh, walking through the neighborhood. Um, he walked for miles uh, both north, south, east and west uh, throughout this neighborhood. Someone out there knows this man. Someone out there knows what he did and boy there's a lot of money on the table. You need to come forward, call the LAPD West Barrel Homicide. Our number is 213-382-9470 and let's give Brianna's family justice. Thank you. The number again, I'm sorry, is 213-382-9470. Are there any questions about the investigation at this time? Uh, yes, yes, I hear release said that there were some items that were recovered uh, that made you believe that this suspect is homeless. Can you talk about what those items are? Do you still believe the suspect's homeless? We do believe that the suspect is homeless, and that's in part by the fact that he came on foot, left on foot. He's carrying a backpack, which is consistent with homeless people carrying extra clothing with them and uh, sleeping out in the streets. Uh, there's some additional information that I cannot share with you at this point, but we believe that he is homeless. Is there any motive? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
and come together for the right reason. Of course, it's not just the money, but we need to hold this person accountable for what they did. Lieutenant, is there video from inside the store and any idea how long the suspect was in the store? Obviously long enough for her to send a text message. Uh, the, the suspect was inside the store for, for several minutes, and I'm not going to comment on all the video right now. You said there was, question. Said there was evidence. Is there DNA evidence? Or well, uh, I, I don't know just yet, but I can tell you that we, uh, we did our best to preserve any evidence that w might have been present. What can you talk about the murder weapon? Um, the murder weapon um, uh, appears to be a knife. That's it. So that, that'll conclude the question and answer portion. Uh, We'll have Captain Sonia Monaco from Wilshire area. She's going to speak very briefly to some of the overall uh, crime stats. In an effort. Good afternoon. So first of all, I'd like to say to Brianna's family, our hearts um, are broken and we're praying um, for you. It's a very difficult time. I have a daughter myself and um, I, I, I want to echo what the chief of police said. We are doing everything in our power uh, officers, detectives, everybody's working around the clock. I have reserve uh, folks that have come out uh, canvassing, assisting our detectives with the investigation, uh, working very hard. Um, we have our, our mountain unit. Everybody is out and about uh, trying to identify and search for this individual. All we ask is a community that continues to work with us. You have been wonderful since I came, I came here to Wilshire last year. You've helped us solve numerous crimes. I ask you to please take a look at your video, uh, talk to each other, and any information that you might have, please contact our homicide detectives. You can also contact our WE tips at 1 uh, 877 uh, tips 24 7. That's 1 877 tips 24 7. Thank you. Thank you. That's that's going to conclude. Can you try to address the issue of crime and homelessness? What does it say about our fight against homelessness? Given what happened to the nurse and now Brianna, and given that many people now may be more even more afraid of the homelessness. Well, as we uh, indicated last week at the press, the urine press conference, the role of persons experiencing homelessness being both victims and suspects in the in the crime of homicide, shooting violence, has increased year over year. Uh, and it has been a, a consequence, I believe, of a, couple, of a couple of different things. As I remarked in my social media posts over the weekend relative to the murder of the 77-year-old uh, 70, woman, the nurse from, uh, that works at USC down in, in, uh, in Chinatown, I think it speaks of a failed, our failed system on mental health. Uh, the fact of the matter is, is that uh, over the weekend, if an individual is suffering a mental health crisis, they're likely the only resource they had was 911 and a police officer or a firefighter. And that's wrong. Uh, and that has got to change. When we look at that man's movements across the country, I think you'll find a person who the mental health system failed not only here, but failed in other parts. So our men and women have seen that. Our men and women are also dealing with a homeless, a homeless environment that has a lack of housing, that has a lack of supportive housing, that also has a lack of obligation of people to take advantage of housing. Uh, and not to exist in these very dangerous and, and, and uh, perilous circumstances being called unsheltered or a person who's houseless. So I'm encouraged as we come into this year uh, by the steps recently by this council uh, in regards to uh, ordinances that, rec that recognize that coupling outreach and engagement services with cleanup and sanitation that follows with enforcement is a comprehensive approach that can not just reduce the size of our homeless population, but can deter those who wish to be or stay in a homeless environment. It is, it is in critical to our success moving forward as I move across the city that circumstances of people who are unsheltered and living on the street, uh, we, we need to approach it, not from a law enforcement standpoint alone, uh, but also not, in the, not without law enforcement. But we need to do a better job uh, these stats, these lives are speaking to mental health, substance abuse, housing, and ensuring that people uh, who are a danger to the public are not allowed to remain in our city streets. And that's what I would say. Thank you all for your attention to this matter. Uh, we need to find this killer. God bless you. <clears throat>